to progress very quickly towards places like Grandview. So wind will continue to be the big thing that we monitor here. Severe thunderstorm watch for all of these areas in yellow, which does include the majority of North Texas. That will take us until 9 a.m. Of course, storm uh, warnings, severe storm warnings with those damaging wind gusts. But through the day today, we will have a windy setup in general with or without those storms around. Uh, so you even back off to the east where those storms have not come through, you're still seeing some high wind speeds there around Athens up to 34 miles per hour. So keep that in mind. We've got a wind advisory in place today. But of course, to start the day, the concern will continue to be on severe weather. Let's get a check now on traffic and certainly watching those roads closely as well. Madison. Well, I want to show you a live look from our storm chaser, Jason McLaughlin. He's up in Denton County, and you can see even as he's stationary in his vehicle, you can see how heavy the rainfall is and also those winds whipping around that. Oh, yeah. Zero Mike South of North Richland Hills, uh, peak winds 32 miles an hour, rain, no hail. What was that measured gust or measured wind? Uh, yes, it's uh, weather station measured 32 peak gust. Okay, thank you. 35 MAY, K5 TX, copy direct. Your light uh, keep flashing. I may go off in a minute here, but right now I'm good. Alright, I hear someone calling you to an answer. I'll pick it up. Thank you, sir.
insurance will cover the repairs. The NCTA tells Alana that... <laughs> ...and then contact the construction company and the fire... Anyone experiencing damage here uh, in Tarrant County at this time? CBS 11 One for Justice Hotline anytime, 817-586-7211, or email Alana and her producers at justice at cbs.com. A prominent North Texas financial planner is under federal indictment, accused of mismanaging his client's money. Neil Gallagher has a radio show and is CEO of the Gallagher Financial Group with offices in North Dallas and in Hearst. He was arrested Friday. Federal
Gary, I've got to hit the road for Houston. So y'all have a good day. Okay, a five, OJ. Be safe, Larry. Definitely. DBJ, go ahead. As we roll on into... Maybe there, DBJ, a minute ago, I did catch some power flashes from one of our weather cameras at Northwest Mansfield, but none of our spotters saw them. Maybe there, DBJ. Yeah, it was pretty intense wind, so uh, a lot of stuff blowing around. I lost power off and on for... A few minutes here in uh, Bedford. KB0DBJ, K5TXC, Trent County, ARES. Reaction or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. High cholesterol, weight gain, high blood sugar. Upon standing, falls, seizures, impaired judgment, heat sensitivity, and trouble swallowing may occur. Aspic Raylar can help you get on track. Tired of the winter blues? Need a break from your daily grind? Ready to press pause and make time for you? Escape to Myrtle Beach. Good, he's 
Uh, let's see, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is March 13th of 2019. It is uh, a Wednesday. It's uh, 5 a.m. The rain seems to, we're in uh, West Fort Worth. They sounded the sirens a while ago, <clears throat> but for high winds. I had on using my cell phone. I am an amateur radio operator in Zero Uniform Whiskey Yankee, but I had my cell phone on to uh, what is it called? Broadcastivity or whatever I pay. You can uh, access it for free. There's an Android app, and I'm sure there's a Apple app. Uh, and then I picked. Well, I have it bookmarked, but I picked uh, close to feeds feeds near my location, and that was uh, K5FTW, a repeater on 146.940 megahertz, and that repeater is used for the Tarrant County Races Aries Skywarn network of amateur radio operators. Uh, let's see. Fort Worth. Okay, there are, which is unusual. There's 170 people listening, by the way. 
on this net you were hearing. There are 17 listening to the Fort Worth Northeast Tarrant County Fire Channel. 17 is, is uh, kind of a high number for that. So, so this is a individual that has a radio set up, a receiver set up, and is rebroad who rebroadcast Fort Worth and Northeast Tarrant County Fire Channel. Twenty-one current listeners, and now you'd be able to listen more uh, using this app. A roof has collapsed on an apartment complex someplace. Uh, with this broadcastivity app, no matter where you are, you can pick up. That's some power lines that are down. We didn't uh, lose power even for a split second here. Commercial automatic alarm, 3825 Great Oak Road, 3825 Great Oak Road, Cross Street, Silent Oak Drive, Map 56, Sam, number APT. Uh, this individual power line down, 7300 Hill Drive. This person that provides that, I was just going to say, when you use this app, you'll be able to find, you know, things in your area. Here in the Fort Worth area, the police and fire channels are uh, encrypted. They didn't used to be. They now are encrypted, so you can't, you know, you can't pick them up. Even if you buy one of the expensive, and they have, there are scanners that are, I know, five, six hundred dollars, maybe more. Uh, and you know, they'll say they do digital and all that type of stuff. They won't pick up these that are encrypted. And across the United States, they've gone more and more for security reasons and uh, concern about terrorism, that type of stuff they've gone, and for intercommunication between uh, departments for mutual aid, that type of stuff, they've gone more and more to uh, digital encrypted. Uh, so you very well may not be able to pick up your local with a scanner or over this, of course, either. Uh, let's see. So there is uh, Burlington Police Department, Johnson County Aries, Amateur Radio Emergency Services. Only six people on that channel are listening right now. Uh, okay. Let's see, feeds near my location, uh, top 25 feeds, usually Chicago, yeah, Chicago is number one with 1,512 people listening, then right now it's Portland Police and the County Sheriff's Dispatch, 473 people listening, then it's Cleveland Police Dispatch and Metro Housing Authority. 324 listeners. 
Uh, and there's uh, Marion County, Indiana, 297. Uh, Labette County, Kansas. Wow, 273 people listening there. Uh, must be some storms up in the, because Sedgwick County, Kansas, 258. Uh, Denver, Colorado. Columbus Police Department, Fresno City Police Fire and EMS, Salt Lake City, uh, Lancaster County, ne Nebraska, uh, Westmoreland, Pennsylvania. So. On and on. Now, a lot of police departments will have that aren't encrypted. A lot of police departments <coughs> will have uh, maybe the main dispatch frequency and some other frequencies that you can pick up. But then they'll have maybe TAC units, detective units, narcotic units, and other units that are encoded. Uh, so, sort of varies. I, I started shortwave listening in 1955, my parents, I would be, that was right before I started high school. Uh, my parents had an old true tone regular radio. I'm not sure it even did FM, I don't believe, I'm not sure. But all I had was the AM broadcast band and I would tune down to the low end below 540 kilohertz and I could hear in Morse code, they uh, station, I forget, South America or, or uh, Central America. They just sent its call sign was all. And then I would tune up to the high end of the broadcast band, up above the AM broadcast band, up above 1,500 kilohertz. And it would vary a little bit because of ionospheric conditions, the time of day and whatever, but actually there were actually uh, some police channels that were up there. That was in the olden days. Then there was other, you know, things that I could pick up up there, but it would vary. And that's what got me interested in radio and uh, I kept telling my parents, well, there was a radio television repair shop in the neighborhood and uh, he uh, sold old issues of I forget what the electronic magazine was he would sell them you know he subscribed and then I guess he had them so I'd go down there and buy them bundled up for not very much money and go home and there was a column in there for uh, shortwave listeners, and that. And so then I wanted a shortwave radio, and kept telling my parents that I wanted a shortwave radio. I think it was on, they were only like fifty dollars or whatever. Both my parents worked. My father made really good money. He worked as a boilermaker, but he was he made really good money, union job. The olden days, <laughs> and. Uh, I eventually got $50 and I bought a Helicrafters S38D. Let's see if we can find one here. There we go. There it is. Wow. Is somebody selling that for six or uh, what is that? Oh man! Make your spring break destination Nebraska Furniture Mart for a spring break tax break. There it is. S38D. 
old radios uh, because of old people like me that uh, are, uh, you know, want to remember our old days or something like that. I believe this had five tubes in it. S38D, shortwave radio. Then, there's no way I would pay, I wouldn't even pay $50 for it. I don't know, if I had shelves and things up and I wanted to, you know, look around and remember the old days, maybe I would buy one for 50 bucks, you know, and put it up on the shelf or something. Not that it looked like this, so I would want it to look, uh, let's see. SX-99 was the next radio that I had. Uh, um. Oops, don't want to log in. Okay, let's, uh, okay, I want to do it up here, I guess. Yeah, it's, um, there it is. Uh, amazing the uh, stuff that I heard that we, people that were shortwave listeners or DXers. Um, let's see what this one looks Let's see what this one here looks like. Yep, there it is. The good old days. Then I think I had an NC-183. Well, anyway. On regular radio, like on a, on well, listening on the ra on the AM broadcast band, you could pick up uh, stations that were far away. Uh, television. We had now have digital, but back when we had analog, and back when I was a kid, I I remember picking up. Cuban TV stations and Canadian TV stations, you know, they would come in, especially like on Sundays, uh, because it was the Lord's Day or whatever, uh, stations didn't start broadcasting until, I don't know, 11 or in the morning or something like that. And so there was no local station taking up the channel. Of course, there were also channels that weren't, wouldn't be, but so you could just, uh, with rabbit ears on top of your set, you were lucky if you had an outside antenna. But with rabbit ears, you just sit there and you would see stations. You know, sometimes they'd be come in, maybe they might be there for 30 minutes and you watch a, uh, some TV show. And uh, sometimes stations would just come in or out. Uh, and then you, when they would do the, you know, station ID or the test pattern you would see their call sign and then you could look you could know you know who they were on the AM broadcast band uh, back in gosh the 60s I'm thinking Cuba started broadcasting to the United States on the AM broadcast band so they picked out one of their stations and they kicked the power up and I could hear it uh, in the middle of the United States, in Kansas City, Missouri, I could hear them, Radio Free Dixie, and they were broadcasting to black people. I think we called them colored then, I believe. Uh, in the south of the United States, they were called, you know, it was Radio Free Dixie, and they were telling them, you know, white men are raping your women and rise up or whatever. And the United States, you know, there are regulations, international regulations on frequencies, power, all that type of stuff that are agreed 
agreed on. Then there are regional, you know, and there were, were treaties and things signed between, you know, the countries of North America, Canada, Mexico, and, you know, Cuba and Costa Rica and Brazil and all that. And there were, so uh, Cuba was in violation of the rules. And so the United States apparently let them know, okay, stop that or else we are going to, you know, turn on our transmitter, you know, kick up our, and so Cuba stopped doing the, now of course the United States is still <laughs> broadcasting to Cuba on the AM broadcast band and in a shortwave frequency or two, Radio Marti, you know, anti-communist uh, broadcasting. And there for a while, the Central Intelligence Agency was broadcasting from Swan Island by shortwave and I believe the AM broadcast band also to Cuba. And uh, of course they denied, the CIA denied that they were broadcasting that they were, you know, broadcasting Swan Island. But I could pick up transmissions over point to point that were being, you know, uh, that were created in the United States and were being broadcast down uh, over point to point radio so that they could be rebroadcast, you know. So. Uh, one time before an international telecommunications conference, I forget the year, uh, a, a number of people were asked to, you know, uh, apply, I believe. I believe you had to apply. But anyway, I was picked to be, to monitor the frequencies, and I was given the number of the Grand Island, Nebraska FCC monitoring post. And uh, I could call them and say there's such and such a station broadcasting on such and such. And I think I only did it once or twice. I know I did it once. I did it for a, a Cuban or for a Spanish counting station, you know, giving cr encrypted coded messages or, or just doing that to screw with, you know, with another country, you know. And... Uh, you know, they would pop up on certain frequencies and maybe vary the frequency. And there weren't just uh, Spanish, but there were other, you know, counting stations that you would pick up. And I'm sure you still pick up today on shortwave radio. Anyway, I didn't intend to get into on this subject or whatever. But since I'm on this subject... Uh, one time I was listening to Radio Havana, Cuba, and uh, in the news they announced that they had arrested a Catholic uh, bishop and that they had found guns and ammunition and, I don't know, you know, in the basement, you know, his basement or whatever. And, in Kansas City, Missouri, there was, I think it still exists, maybe, the National Catholic Reporter, which was a Catholic newspaper that was distributed, or you could subscribe to it all across the United States. It wasn't just a local Catholic paper, and that was also, uh, I think, available at church when you went to church. I don't know if it was in Iraq in the, in the lobby that where you could purchase it or if you could just take a copy. So it was a national publication and a pretty good one, and I think it still exists. But so I called the weekly. It was a weekly. So I called them up, and I said, uh, "Did you all know that a Catholic priest and or, you know or bishop was so and so?" Because I'd written it down, you know. And they said no, and uh, I said, "Do you want to hear the news broadcast?" Because I tape recorded it. They said yes. So did it over the phone. This is before the World Wide Web. <laughs> this is before the internet. This is before Facebook and all that type of stuff. And so I was, my story was on the front page when that weekly paper came out. And just before, well, just before it came out, 
they received, they got some confirmation. And so underneath it, underneath the story, you know, saying, hey, they, they didn't say kid, you know, but uh, reported the following. Then it said underneath it, uh, this has been verified now by the United Press or UPS or somebody. So, man, I spent, I should have been doing other things. I spent, well, it's like it is now with us spending time playing computer games or uh, Facebook or whatever we do, that, you know. And back then, I, as I, I was a kid, I spent all my time, you know, shortwave listening, putting out a, a, I put out a weekly radio program that was broadcast uh, over shortwave radio uh, two or three days a week, depending on the ionospheric conditions and the seasons and that type of, because of frequencies, it was broadcast to Europe, Africa, and Latin America. I put out a monthly magazine that went out to club members of the American, let's see, of the American, let's see, American Shortwave Listeners Club. There's, I've got a book here someplace that gives the history of that's not it. I'm in the book. Uh, it gives a history of shortwave radio and shortwave listening. And I'm in the book on numerous pages. So it was a lot of fun. It was educational. I got, I mean, I'm not the only one. I could tune around the shortwave band and... Uh, not know now it's much easier too well the radios that you have now did you, you know it'll you have the exact frequency back in the old days you weren't sure exactly where you had to have crystal crystal calibrators that would put a beep out on your dial so you got at least have an idea you know but uh, you got where you could tune in a radio station say coming from you thought from South America or whatever and you go yeah they're playing uh, Costa Rican music or you could tune in some African station that was broadcasting on shortwave but was intended for local consumption in Africa and you'd say well that kind of music okay uh, that's Congolese music I remember picking up uh, when the French say French Equatorial Africa, when uh, then the Congo got their independence, and then Katanga, a province of the Congo, they got their ind independence, and those, you know, radio stations were a few miles from each other, but controlled by different forces, and were broadcasting their, their stuff. I can remember writing and sending a reception report to Radio Katanga, and uh, they sent back a verification saying, thank you for listening, and yes, you did hear our broadcast on such and such a frequency at such and such a time or whatever. And the stamps on the envelope that came were Congo independent stamps, but Katanga had overstamped them saying, you know, Katanga, well, now I can't even say it, Indo you know, independence. A lot of, you know, I picked up, I, I'm not the only one, you know, I picked up uh, the early space <coughs> crap that went into space, picked them up, tracked them, <coughs> you know, I'd fall asleep with the headphones on, and about every 90 minutes, you know, Explorer 7 was one, a satellite. And I, it was sending out, you know, beep, 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 and whatever. And I would fall asleep with the headphones on, and then about 90 minutes later, when it came around again, beep, 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 you know, it would wake me up. Uh, the good old days, except all that time that I, I should have been going out doing stuff, or getting educated, or getting laid, or something. 
anyway, I do thank you for uh, watching this video. Please give a thumb up. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, I've been trying to get to 3,000 subscribers for years. And I'm close, but I haven't made it yet. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and please click the little bell. That way you'll get an email each time I uh, post a video. It is now 5.30 a.m. March 13th, 2019. Thank you very much.